Upanayana, Sanskrit, Upanayana, Upanayana is one of the traditional samskaras rites of passage that marked the acceptance of a student by a guru teacher and an individual's entrance to a school in Hinduism. The tradition is widely discussed in ancient Sanskrit texts of India and varies regionally. The sacred thread or Jainu is received by the boy during this ceremony, that he continues wearing across his chest thereafter. The Upanayana was restricted in many medieval Indian texts to the upper three of the four varnas castes of society—Brahmins, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas. However, Vedic period texts such as the Bhadayana Griyasutra encouraged all members of society to undergo the Upanayana, even manual workers shudras. Women were encouraged to undergo Upanayana in ancient India before they started Vedic studies or before their wedding. Etymology Upanayana Sanskrit, Upanayana literally means, the act of leading to or near. It is an important and widely discussed samskara in ancient Sanskrit text. The rite of passage symbolizes the leading or drawing towards the self of a child, in a school, by a teacher. It is a ceremony in which a guru teacher accepts and draws a child towards knowledge and initiates the second birth that is of the young mind and spirit. Description Upanayana is the rite of passage for the start of formal education of writing, numbers, reading, vedangas, arts and other skills. The Upanayana rite of passage was also important to the teacher, as the student would therefrom begin to live in the Gurukul school. Upanayana was an elaborate ceremony, that included rituals involving the family, the child and the teacher. A boy receives during this ceremony a sacred thread called Yajñopavitam that he wears. The Yajñopavita ceremony announced that the child had entered into formal education. In the modern era, the Upanayana rite of passage is open to anyone at any age. The education of a student was not limited to ritual and philosophical speculations found in the Vedas and the Upanishads. They extended to many arts and crafts, which had their own, similar rites of passages. Aitareya Brahmana, Agamas, and Puranas literature of Hinduism describe these as Shilpa Sastras. They extend to all practical aspects of culture, such as the sculptor, the potter, the perfumer, the wheelwright, the painter, the weaver, the architect, the dancer, and the musician. Ancient Indian texts assert that the number of the arts is unlimited, but each deploy elements of 64 kala, kala techniques and 32 vidyas, vidya fields of knowledge. The training of these began from childhood and included studies about dharma, culture, reading, writing, mathematics, geometry, colors, tools, as well as traditions trade secrets. The rites of passage during apprentice education varied in the respective guilds. Rajabali Pandi compares the Upanayana rite of passage to baptism in Christianity where the person is born again unto spiritual knowledge, as the ceremony marked the initiation of the student for spiritual studies such as the Vedas. Age, gender and varna restrictions In Hindu traditions, a human being is born at least twice—once at physical birth and second at intellectual birth through teacher's care. The first is marked through the Jatakarman Sanskara ritual, the second is marked through Upanayanam or Vidyaramba rites of passage. A sacred thread was given by the teacher during the initiation to school ceremony and was a symbolic reminder to the student of his purpose at school as well as a social marker of the student as someone who was born a second time DVIJA. twice born, he went about collecting firewood in forest and food donations from villages on a daily basis. Many medieval era texts discuss Upanayana in the context of three varnas, caste, class, Brahmins, Shreyas and Vaishyas. Several texts such as Sushruta Sutrasthana, however, also include sudras entering schools and the formal education process, stating that the Upanayana samskara was open to everyone. The Bhadayana Griya Sutra in verses 2.5.8 and 2.5.9 states the teacher to L ed him initiate to school through Upanayana a Brahmin in spring, a Kshatriya in summer, a Vaishya in autumn, a Sudra in the rainy season, or all of them in the spring. The ceremony was typically performed at age 8 among the Brahmins, at age 11 among the Kshatriyas, and age 12 among Vaishyas. 
Apastamba Graha Sutra, in verse 1.1.1.27, places a maximum age limit of 24 for the Upanayana ceremony and start of formal education. However, Gautama Graha Sutra and other ancient texts state that there is no age restriction and anyone of any age can undertake Upanayanam when they feel they initiate their formal studies of the Vedas. Topic: <laughs> Women and Upanayana. In some regions in modern times, boys and girls undergo the tradition of Upanayana initiation when they start their formal schooling. In ancient and medieval eras, texts such as Harita Dharmasutras, Asvalayana Grhya Sutra and Yama Smriti suggest women could begin Vedic studies after the Upanayana rite of passage. Girls who decided to become a student underwent the Upanayana rite of passage, at the age of eight, and thereafter were called Brahmavadini. They wore a thread or upper garment over their left shoulder. Those girls who chose not to go to a gurukul were called Sadhyavadu, literally, one who marries straight. However, the Sadhyavadu, too, underwent a step during the wedding rituals, where she would complete Upanayana, and thereafter wear her upper garment sari over her left shoulder. This interim symbolic Upanayana rite of passage for a girl, before her wedding, is described in multiple texts such as the Gobila Graha Sutra verse 2.1.19 and some Dharmasutras. Doubts about Upanayanam rite of passage in old texts Scholars state that the details and restrictions in the Upanayana ceremony is likely to have been inserted into ancient texts in a more modern era. Hermann Oldenburg, for example, states that Upanayana—the solemn reception of the pupil by the teacher to teach him the Veda— is joined into texts of Vedic texts at places that simply do not make any contextual sense, do not match the style, and are likely to be a corruption of the ancient texts. For example, in Satipatha Brahmana, the Upanayana rite of passage text appears in the middle of a dialogue about Agnihotra. After the Upanayana verse end, sage Sakya abruptly returns to the Agnihotra and Utilaka. Oldenburg states that the Upanayana discussion is likely an insertion into the older text. Scholars state that there is high likelihood of interpolation, insertion, and corruption in Dharma Sutras and Dharma Sastra texts, and there are contradictory verses in it on Upanayana related rites of passage. Kane similarly states, in his History of Dharma Sastra Reviews, that there is high likelihood of interpolation, insertion, and corruption in Dharma Sutras and Dharma Sastra texts on Upanayana related rite of passage. Patrick Olivelle notes the doubts in postmodern scholarship about the presumed reliability of Manumriti manuscripts. He writes, Manumriti was the first Indian legal text introduced to the Western world through the translation of Sir William Jones in 1794. This was based on the Calcutta manuscript with the commentary of Kulika, which has been assumed to be the reliable Vulgate version, and translated repeatedly from Jones in 1794 to Doniger in 1991. The reliability of the Manumriti manuscript used since colonial times, states Olivelle, is far from the truth. Indeed, one of the great surprises of my editorial work has been to discover how few of the over 50 manuscripts that I collated actually follow the Vulgate in key readings. <laughs> Significance of the Yajñapavitam, sacred thread the Sacred thread, Sanskrit yajñapavitam yajñapavitam or upavita, is a thin cord composed of three cotton strands. The strands symbolize different things in their regions. For example, among Tamil Hindus, each strand is for each of the three trinity of goddesses Parvati, Lakshmi, and Saraswati. The ancient Sanskrit texts offer a diverse view while describing yajñapavitam or upavita. The term upavita was originally meant to be any upper garment, as stated in verse 2.2.4.22-2.2.4.23 of Apastamba Dharmasutra or, if the wearer doesn't want to wear a top, a thread would suffice. The thread identified a person who is studying at a school or has graduated. The ancient Indian scholar Haridatta states, Yajñapavitam means a particular mode of wearing the upper garment, and it is not necessary to have the yajñapavita at all times." The Gobila Graha Sutra similarly states, at verse 1.2.1 in its discussion on Upanayana, that, "...the student understands the yanopavita as a cord of threads, or a garment, or a rope of kusa grass." 
and it is its methods of wearing and the significance that matters. The proper manner of wearing the upper garment or thread, state the ancient texts, is from over the left shoulder and under the right arm, the idea of wearing the upper garment or sacred thread, and its significance, extended to women. This is reflected in the traditional wearing of sari over the left shoulder, during formal occasions and the celebration of rites of passage such as Hindu weddings. It was also the norm if a girl undertakes the Upanayana ceremony and begins her Vedic studies as a Brahmavadini. The sacred Yajnapavitam is known by many names varying by region and community, such as Bradabanda, Janavara, Jandyam, Poida, Punal, Jainu, Lagan, Yanopavita, Yagyapavit, Yanya, and Zanar. The other Sanskrit term for it is Avyanga. <laughs> Vedic or medieval tradition There is no mention of any rule or custom, states Patrick Olivelle, that "...required Brahmins to wear a sacred string at all times." in the Brahmanical literature Vedic and ancient post-Vedic. Yajñapavitam, textual evidence suggests, is a medieval and modern tradition. However, the term Yajñapavita appears in ancient Hindu literature, and therein it means a way of wearing the upper garment during a ritual or rites of passage. The custom of wearing a string is a late development in Hinduism, was optional in the medieval era, and the ancient Indian texts do not mention this ritual for any class or for Upanayana. Yajñapavita contrasts with Prasanavita method of wearing the upper garment, the latter a reverse and mirror image of former, and suggested to signify rituals for elders, ancestors, for example, funeral. Regional variations <inaudible> Nepal In Nepal a slightly different ceremony is held which combines Kura Karma Chudakarma tonsure, shave the head and Upanayana Samskara locally known as Bradabanda Sanskrit Brata. Promise, bundan To be bound. It is held among the Brahmin and Kshatriya hill communities in Nepal. This sanskara rite of passage involves elaborate karma kanda which involves the participation of entire family and a guru teacher who then accepts the boy as a disciple in the guru shisha tradition of Hinduism. This marks as an individual's entrance to a school of Hinduism. This ceremony ends after the boy goes for his first alms round to relatives and leave for Guru's ashram. Traditionally these boys were sent to ashrams with the gurus to learn in a gurukul system of education but in modern times this act of the boy doing for first alms round in town and leaving his family for Guru's hermitage is done symbolically within the family and is later stopped by his maternal uncle Mama from leaving. Topic India The ceremony is called Munja, Munji or Munji Bandana lit, tying of Munja in the states of Maharashtra and Karnataka. This name finds its origin in the name of a grass called Sakaram Munja Bengal cane. This grass is used to make a girdle that is tied around the waist of the child. In Bengal, the girdle of Munja grass is called Makala. In Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and in several areas of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, the sacred thread is known as the Yanoi, Geneva or Jainu. <laughs> See also